16 wickets fell on the second day of the LV County Championship match at Grace Road between Leicestershire and Glamorgan, including a hat-trick from former England paceman Matthew Hoggard as the home side tried to press home their advantage. Hoggard had first battled hard to bat at the end of the first day, along with Claude Henderson, who was closing in on a career best when Leicestershire resumed on day two at 231 for nine, and a last wicket stand reached 46. It was finally ended when Hoggard edged Graham Wagg behind to depart for 12, leaving Henderson undefeated on 80, just one short of his best. But those late runs were to prove crucial when Glamorgan came out to bat, led by their new skipper, Alvaro Peterson. The former South African test opener immediately looked the part at his new county as he began his career well. But after an opening stand of 36, Hoggard produced a moment of magic with a hat-trick, the third of his career. He first had a disappointed Gareth Rees taken at the wicket for 10. Then with his next ball, he trapped William Bragg in front to complete his sixth over. With the first ball of his seventh, he struck again as Mike Powell edged a ball to Will Jefferson in the slips. It was a memorable start of the summer for the talented Leicestershire skipper and it was the first hat-trick at Grace Road since Winston Benjamins in 1989. Peterson had probably watched with dismay from the other end and he now knew he had a big job on his hands, one he was clearly capable of dealing with. But after a brief respite until lunch, more wickets fell. Ben Wright on 11 went to the first ball of the afternoon session, unable to cope with a bit of bounce from Nadim Malik. And worse followed as Mark Wallace misjudged the length of a delivery from Nathan Buck, which clipped the top of his off stump to leave Glamorgan reeling on 69 for five. With Robert Croft at number seven, the Welshman had a bit of a tail, even though he scored a ton in pre-season. And he was thankful to survive this ball from Malik as all of the Leicestershire seamers impressed. Peterson was leading his side from the front, however, and he began his county career by posting a much needed half century made from 107 balls. It was an excellent knock given the circumstances. But with his side reaching 89 for five, they were by no means out of the woods yet, and he still needed some support, something Croft was unable to give him as he was dismissed for 11, tamely edging a ball from Henderson to slip. Wag's first innings in Glamorgan colours lasted just a single delivery, as he was trapped right in front by Henderson's quicker ball. So at 89 for seven, we had the second hat-trick ball of the day, although this time Dean Costco was able to survive. But Glamorgan was still in deep bother, and although Costco and his captain brought up the 100, they were soon eight down as the former offered James Taylor a catch at short leg, as the impressive Henderson made a very good start to his benefit year, with a third wicket adding to his important runs. Peterson was being left high and dry as Adam Shantry was bowled by Jigger Naik to lead the visitors in massive trouble on 112 for nine. The skipper was left with no option but to make the most of anything handed to him and he hit Henderson for a six as he moved into the 90s. But nine short of what would have been a sensational 100, he turned a ball from Buck into the hands of who else but Henderson at long leg. His 91 had been made out of a total of just 146. So Leicestershire were well on top with a first innings lead of 92, but they knew that they still had much to do as Jefferson and Matthew Boyce opened up second time around. They were soon one down too, as Boyce was another to forget where his off stump was. Wag took that wicket and he was soon celebrating again as Jacques de Toy failed for the second time in two days although it took an outstanding catch by Bragg to dismiss him. That left Leicestershire on 13 for two, and memories of last year's corresponding fixture, when they lost from a very handy position, may have been flooding back. But Jefferson and Taylor had other things on their minds, and they were determined not to let a strong position falter. But life doesn't always pan out as you would hope, and having taken the total to 36, Leicestershire suddenly lost three quick wickets. Taylor on 14 was really well held by Wallace standing up to Chantry. Greg Smith was then leg before to Koska, having a fine game with the ball. And the same bowler confirmed that by having Tom New again well taken behind in the same over. Suddenly, Leicestershire were 43 for five and looked destined to collapse, but Jefferson and Nate managed to see out the final 50 minutes of the day with no further losses. 
It might have been a good fight back by the visitors, but Leicestershire are still well placed. The end of the day on 78 for five, with Jefferson still there on an important 48, and that gives them a lead of 170. They will still be confident in a match which may not need a fourth day.